Welcome to SiouxSports.com. I'm Tony Bonaferro, joined alongside Scotty's Tournament of Hearts, five-time representing three different regions, two-time Masters champion, Tour Challenger winner, and current member of Team Holman, Tracy Fleury. Tracy, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, thanks for having me. So before we get started, you ladies are on quite a roll lately. Uh, kind of talk about how things are going so far for you guys. Yeah, it's going really well. A uh, new team this year, and we're all uh, playing new positions, actually. So we expected that there would be a little bit of a learning curve as we settle into our new roles. Um, so at the beginning of the season, we did that. We just tried to learn as much as we could about our new uh, positions. And yeah, our last couple of, of events, we really feel like we've um, started to click and we have some momentum on our side now. That's great. So before we get too much into this, I got to tell you, it's almost it, it's kind of ironic that we're doing this today because um, I went on my Facebook earlier today and uh, I was reading up on some memories that I had. And uh, I actually commented one of my memories was, I guess it was a year ago today when you played Jennifer Jones uh, in the finals, I believe, of the Canadian Curling Championships for the Olympic trials. Would that have been a year ago, I believe? Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's around uh, so, that time of year. Oh, yeah. yeah my, not the my, best memory for me. Yeah. <laughs> it was a year ago. Yeah, yeah it was. So um, it, was, it was just, it was really ironic because I was looking at it and obviously Brad Jacobs is from the Sioux. So I had two Facebook posts and one of them was let's go Brad Jacobs. And the other one was talking about how uh, this, the game that you two were playing in was one of the most entertaining curling games I've ever seen. Uh Kind of talk a little bit about that game and just your memories of it and just kind of like the feelings and emotions that went through that. Yeah, it was definitely a really exciting game, really back and forth, and it came down to the wire. And, uh, yeah, obviously so much on the line in that game and um, a very emotional game for us, but um, a great experience at the same time. You don't get many chances to play in a game like that with so much on the line, and I really think that we'll all learn from that. Um that's just a different kind of pressure, just just a different kind of vibe out there. Um, but we were happy to give it our best shot and make it a really close and exciting game. Just unfortunately, needed another shot here. Or there. Yeah, it, it was a, it was one of the most entertaining curling games I've ever seen. It was it was unbelievable. So, um, so I just kind of wanted to talk a, a little bit about kind of your your journey in curling, right? So you obviously come from a curling family. Uh, I believe you. I read that you started curling when you were five years old. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, yeah okay. the little rock program here in Oh, that, that's yeah. amazing. Um, so you obviously come from a curling family. Has it was it always kind of a foregone conclusion that you'd be a curler growing up, or, or kind of how did you kind of you know fall into this role? Uh, no, like we all uh, tried a bunch of different sports when we were kids. We wanted to get some variety and see what we liked, and uh, but curling was just so much fun, and we really enjoyed the sport. And uh, yeah, started young, five years old, and uh, just kind of stuck with it. But yeah, didn't know for sure that that's what we would choose to do. Yeah. Um, growing up, who did you idolize in the curling community or in the curling world? Uh, I really liked Kelly Scott from from BC. Yeah, yeah she's a Scotty's uh, champion. And I just really liked, always liked her demeanor on the ice, so calm and uh, always so positive. Yeah, that's the one thing I've noticed about you. You kind, you have this level of, of calmness when you're out there, it seems at all times. Has that always been the case with you or have you kind of had to develop that over the years? Um, I'd say I was always fairly calm, but um, in the earlier days, I would be like very hard on myself, um, had a hard time bouncing back after tough losses and stuff. And that's kind of something that you develop kind of as your career goes on, something that's improved. But yeah, I have always been pretty calm out there. Oh, that's great. Um, curling has obviously undergone quite a few changes over the years, right? And the game has evolved quite significantly in the last 15 years. You've kind of been at the forefront of that to kind of see how curling has evolved. You know, in your opinion, how have you seen it evolve? And are, are you happy with kind of the changes that you've seen with the game? Uh, I'd say the biggest change is just like the competitiveness. There's just so much talent out there these days. And there's so many teams around the world that are just working so hard and putting so much time and effort in that if you want to be able to compete, you have to do the same. So um, I'd say it's, it's a really big time com commitment to be able to compete at the elite level. Yeah, and that was actually leads me to my next question. 
it blows me away that you guys are professional athletes, right? And, you know, we can watch you guys on TSN. We can watch you guys on Sportsnet. But deep down, it's almost like you guys have to still go to your regular nine to five jobs, right? On Monday to Friday, right? And it's almost like curlers have to hold, you know, wear two hats, so to speak, right? They have their professional lives, but then they also have their other professional lives, right? Their, their, their work life. I personally don't think that's fair. Um, do you ever see a, the possibility of professional curlers actually being able to do this full time as a career? Yeah, there is some out there that are doing that, just focusing on curling, and that is their job. Um, so there is some money in curling if you do want to do it professionally, but. I mean, sport is so unpredictable. You don't know that you're always going to be at the top of the game. So it's um, a lot of pressure if you do make that your uh, career choice. So, yeah, most of us curlers, we do want to keep the the day jobs just in case. <laughs> How do you find the balance for that, though? I mean, it, it seems like it would be really difficult, right? Like you have a family, um, things like that. It must be real, really difficult to try and manage and balance that. It definitely is. You, you need to make sure you have a good support system in place and have family um, and friends that are supportive. And for me, um, my husband has been really great through all of this. And we have a little girl now, a two-year-old, and um, he's just so supportive and really uh, holds down the fort at home while I'm away. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do that, as well as having um, a supportive employer um, willing to give the time off and stuff. It's All of that um, is just so important. Yeah, that's amazing. Is there anything that you, if you know, if if you were, if you were running, you know, Curling Canada, so to speak, are there any changes that you would make to the system, to the current system, and the way that tournaments currently are run? Um, just off the top, all I can think of is that it's hard when you're starting out in the sport. Like you want to be a competitive player, it's kind of hard to break through. Um, so it seems like um, we kind of need some more of those like tier two type events that kind of bridge the gap from like starting out to like the elite level. I think that would help with that transition. And I know there is steps making being made in that direction to work on um, more tier two events, but that's definitely um, an area I'd like to see some focus on. Oh, that's great. So this year, obviously you, uh, you joined Team Holman, right? Um, a, a big change for you. Can you kind of talk about how this came to be? I mean, obviously, you have uh, have a, an unbelievable reputation. Rachel Holman, obviously, uh, one of the best curlers, obviously, in Canada as well. How did this relationship kind of uh, come to be? Well, it seems at the end of um, the curling quadrennial, like after the Olympic cycle, uh, teams do tend to make a lot of changes. And this was especially true last cycle. I think only one ladies team really stayed together at the elite level. So, um in Canada anyways. So um, lots of changes. Um, my previous team, we did decide to disband. Um, so didn't really know what was going to happen after that. But I've known Rachel and the girls for a very long time since we were teenagers, really. Um, I thought that they would be looking for a lead because their lead had stepped back from the game. So I didn't really think about reaching out to them. But uh, then Rachel gave me a, just gave me a call one day and uh, we talked it through and uh, it just seemed like it was a really good fit that we had a lot of the same um, goals. So yeah, worked yeah, out. I, I kinda, it, it's neat to see the dynamic between you two, you know, when you guys are out on the ice, right? You're, you've obviously both been skips for a number of years. How do you guys kind of make that work on the ice? Yeah, the, everyone on our team just has so much curling knowledge that we can really um, learn from each other and work together as a team. And uh, yeah, Rachel, um, such a great shot maker and strategist. Um, so like just learning, um, I've just been learning from her a lot and uh, trying to support her in the best way that I can. And uh, yeah, just happy to be a part of this talented team. What do you think the key to your success has been so far early in the season? I mean, obviously you guys just started and, and you guys have had unbelievable success. So what do you think the, the key has been? We've been working really hard. Uh, we practice hard. We always try to find the right balance between competition and practice. And I think um, just making sure we're working on the right things and um, really focusing on our new roles um, on the team is just really important. And uh 
yeah, just uh, all the work we we put in outside of competition is so important. Now you you're shoot, you're shooting third currently. Um, what kind of adjustments have you had to make in your game? And and you know obviously it's a lot different from shooting last. So uh, are you enjoying the change? Are you finding it more difficult? Do you find it you know easier? Kind of where are you at with that? It's different, but I yeah I'm really enjoying it. It's um, the shots that you play at third tend to be a little bit different than skip and. I find with skip shots, it's often just a make or miss situation. But when you're throwing third, there's a lot of, there's better ways to miss um, sometimes. So, and ways to make sure I'm making Rachel shots easier. So yeah, there's, I've been learning a lot, but yeah, really enjoying um, the third shots and the setup shots. Oh, that's great. So I got to ask you about Coach Fry. Ryan uh, Ryan has, you know, he obviously was up here in the Sioux. We're in Sault Ste. Marie, obviously. And Ryan was up here for a number of years. And uh, I've got to know Ryan pretty well over the years and, uh, you know, uh, you know, hung out with him a few times. So what does he kind of bring as a coach, right? When I heard he was coaching you guys, originally I was a little bit surprised because I didn't know how you would do in that kind of role. Uh, but obviously he's having some success with you guys. So just kind of talk Talk about what he brings to you guys and, and how he makes you guys better. Yeah, Ryan has been uh, um, curling for a long time and has quite the impressive resume. Um, he comes with a lot of experience that um, and we can de- that we can learn from. And um, he's just a very kind and supportive person off the ice. And um, he sets goals high and um, holds us accountable. And he's really good at like facilitating team discussions, helping us with strategy, helping us with practice plans. So he's been a really huge part of us forming this team. That's great. And actually that was another thing I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about was kind of a little bit about behind the scenes stuff, right? Because what we see on TV is, you know, just you're out there curling right like and we don't get to see a lot of the behind the scenes stuff so that was one thing i was curious about do you guys have team meetings before events do you guys have team meetings before each game kind of to talk strategy how does how what's what's a typical game day look like for you guys uh yeah we do try to meet as often as we can um virtually we do all have different schedules so it can be challenging at times but we always try to make sure we're debriefing after events and trying to connect before events and uh yeah in competition before our games we all try to um meet before our games and um discuss what we're working on that game and set goals and i think that's really important to keep that uh routine so on a typical game day, when you guys play a couple games, you know, in a day, what does a game day look like for you? Um, or is well, it, is it just, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, it's really different um, depending on the competition, how many games we have. But um, we do want to make sure that we're rested. Um, that's really important. Making sure we get enough sleep, um, making sure... Um, Our nutrition is good is also very important and hydration and um, just making sure we take time to um, relax and uh, do some team bonding. And so it's not just like only focused on curling. Yeah, I I have I follow uh, Emma Miskew on um, on Facebook there. So I I get to see all your all your TikToks and all your team bonding and those types of things. So that's, uh, you know, it's it's neat to see what you guys do, uh, you know, just to kind of bond as a team. And that was one thing that really kind of stood out to me was for being a new team, it seems like you guys gel really, really well together. Is uh, Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd say so for sure. And um, when you're on a curling team, you spend so much time with people um, when you're traveling. So it is really important to make sure that you're having fun off the ice. And um, some people say that our team is so serious on the ice, but that's because we're in the zone. We're competing. We want to win. We're very competitive. But off the ice, we do have a lot of fun. Yeah, and I think it's really cool what Emma does, right? Because it shows a total different side to your team. You're, you are absolutely right. On the ice, it seems like you guys are dialed in and focused. But then even after that big win you guys had a couple weeks ago and you guys were in the mall and you did those races on the uh, – on the what were those? like <laughs> <laughs> Big stuffed animals. Yeah, the big stuffed animals in yeah. the race on the mall. But that was great, right? It, it, just, it, just, it shows a total different side to you guys. And, and I think that that's really cool to see. So um, it, it is nice to see that. Um, after a game, 
do you guys meet after a game and kind of talk about the game and how it developed and, and what happened? Or do you guys kind of just let it sit for a little while, let things kind of, you know, settle in and then have a discussion about it afterwards? We do make sure that we're meeting after all of our games. Um, obviously, after certain losses, they can be harder than others. So we want to make sure in those instances that everyone has had the appropriate amount of time to reflect. Um, but yeah, for the, the most time, we're meeting um, right after the game and uh, um, trying to talk about like what we did well, what we want to bring to the next game, and also um, identifying those moments in the game that where we could have done things differently to improve uh, for next time. Yeah, absolutely. Curling, one of the biggest evolutions that I've seen in curling, and kind of you talked about it a little bit, right, was, um, you know, we've come a long way from back in the day when all curling was, was, you know, go and have a couple drinks and show up and shoot, right? And and now it's a lot more, uh, you know, you have to be in shape. There's a lot more physical fi- or physicality to the game, especially with sweeping and things like that. You've kind of seen that you've seen the game progress that way. Do you see the game taking another step even further in terms of physical conditioning? Or do you think it's kind of, you know, hit its peak right now? Um, I think the physical fitness in the sport is very good right now, but I think it could always be pushed to the next level um, as teams get better and keep setting that bar higher. You do need, need to keep chasing it. And sweeping is just such an important aspect of our game. Um, there could be shots here and there where you just rub a guard where having that sweeping strength could make the difference in a, in a winner or a loss. Right. So um, yeah, we do put a lot of uh, focus and, and attention in that area. All right, so we're going to do a little rapid fire. I have about five or six questions for you. If you don't want to answer them, you can say pass. That's fine. <laughs> so, or if you need to, and if you need to uh, kind of elaborate a little bit, by all means, please do so. So, all right, first question. If you had a choice, yellow rocks or red rocks? Uh, yellow. It's, I feel like it's like a happier color. Fair enough. <laughs> Favorite city or province that you've ever curled in? Hmm. I played a Scotties in Penticton, BC. Yeah. And really loved it out there. It was really nice and the scenery was so beautiful. Okay, fair enough. What's the proudest moment you've had as a curler? And it could be at any level. Uh, I think there's always something special about making it to like your first, um, like, national championship like making it to first scotty's tournament of hearts i remember it was a while ago now like like 10 years ago but there's just it's hard to to top that feeling when you finally make it to your first scotty's all right if you could create a woman's curling dream team who would be on it Hmm. like curlers from like any 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 era any any era yeah hmm Okay, well, I'll have to say Kelly Scott, since I'm such yeah. a fan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, I'd like to be on the team, just uh, <laughs> to, <laughs> to play with all of these yeah. uh, stars. Um, need a good lead, I'd say Dawn McEwen, because yeah. she's a superstar and a very, really nice person. Um, and then I will also say my sister, who doesn't play anymore, but uh, used to curl with her for a very long time, and uh, I miss playing with her. So we would love oh, to have the opportunity. That's great. <laughs> Do you have any game day superstitions? Um, our team is just a little bit uh, superstitious. Sometimes we just... If we're on a winning streak, we try to do some of the same things, like uh, same restaurants or uh, same seats in the car, just uh, little things like that, but nothing major. <laughs> oh, that's great. How many takes does it take to create a team home in TikTok? <laughs> Depends what we're trying to do, I'd say. If yeah. it's any kind of dance or anything, um, maybe at least about five takes, I'd say. Okay. <laughs> um, that's not bad because some of them are pretty intense. So if it's only five yeah. takes, that's impressive. Yeah. Uh, will we ever see Coach Fry in a TikTok? 
Oh, he's done some. Yeah, Emma oh, does a good job. I yeah, mean, Emma does a good job uh, convincing him, I think. Uh, oh. Yeah. And Ryan's wife is uh, actually our social media manager. So I think she can talk him into things too. But oh. yeah, <laughs> he's that's pretty great. easy going. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. That was all I had for you. I know I kind of put you on the spot with a couple of them, but no, definitely appreciate <laughs> that. Um, obviously, the season's relatively young, right? You guys have a, a long way to go. Um, Obviously, your goals are are pretty pretty big, right? And with the way things have been going, realistically, how far do you guys think you can take this? Uh, well, we do ha have some big goals. The main thing for us was um, the most important thing was just to settle into our new positions, and I think we're getting there. Um, yeah, but our team, we would love to win the Scotties, um, maybe win the World Championship. Um, we have some long-term goals. We'd love to um, work towards the Olympics. So there's a lot to play for out there and we're setting our goals high. So you kind of talked about this a little bit earlier about how every, uh, you know, every four years teams kind of reset, right? Is that, is that process difficult, you know, what, trying to find the new teams and, and, you know, obviously people might get feel left out. Like, is it, and the, the curling community seems pretty close, right? Everyone seems to, for the most part, get along and things like that. Is there ever, you know, you know, is, is it is it tough? Is it difficult, right? <laughs> like, is it is it tough to do? Yeah, when the teams are shuffling and you don't really know what's going to happen, um, it can be challenging. Um, it's kind of like a bit of a domino effect where like one team disbands and then it's kind of like a chain reaction from there. So sometimes you're waiting for the, the dominoes to fall. Um, but uh, yeah, it tends to happen pretty quickly when they do actually. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Before we kind of let you go here, who in your life has been your biggest supporter and kind of who has really uh, helped shape and form you to be the curler that you are today? Um, well, my dad uh, is the one who um, was first interested in the sport and uh, got me and um, my three siblings involved at young ages. So I'd say if it wasn't for him, um, getting us involved in the sport and coaching us in those early years, I don't think I would be at this point in my curling career. Yeah. Well, Tracy, listen, we really appreciate you taking some time to do this with us today. Uh, you know, watching you kind of progress over the years, it's been absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, you're, you're still young into, the, into this game. Do you kind of see you, yourself doing this for the next, you know, 20 years? Or do you kind of have, a, do you kind of have like a shelf life for yourself? Do you kind of see yourself retiring at some point? Or, you know, are you still kind of thinking about that at all? Or where are you at with that? Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, 20 years, that seems like a very <laughs> long time, but um, tend to take it like one Olympic cycle at a time um, and then uh, see how I feel after that. Um, but yeah, I'm still really enjoying it and uh, hope to keep going a bit longer. Yeah, well, you, you know, I mean, you've you've had a, a unique journey, right? You've you've played, uh, like I said, you've represented what, three different regions, I believe. Mm -hmm that must be difficult in terms of travel and, and all that type of stuff as well. Right. So um, do you kind of, is that something that you would ever consider doing again, or now that you have, you know, an Ontario team, would you want to stay in the province? Uh, well, I, we, even though we're all, we were representing Ontario, we do all live in four different cities yeah. still. So yeah. um, it, there's still quite a bit of traveling if we want to meet up and uh, practice. Um but I guess it's a there. A couple of my teammates are a little bit closer now, which is easier. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot of um, practicing on our own and holding ourselves accountable and uh, connecting with each other. Um, that's what uh, makes you have success. Well, again, thank you so much for doing this. Um, obviously, you know, it's great that you're from Sudbury. It's great that you're representing Northern Ontario on the national scale. And you do it with with grace. You do it with dignity and you do it with pure class. And you always well, have. You. So thank you so much for doing that. And uh, we will continue to support you. And you have a lot of fans up here in the Sioux. And, you know, hopefully after you guys win the Scotties, maybe you can come back on and uh, and talk to us about how that went. Down <laughs> would love to. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Thanks That's for having great. me on. It was nice yeah. chatting with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. And uh, and you do. You have a ton of fans up here. So best of luck. And we look forward to chatting soon.
Thanks so much. Thanks, Bye. Tracy. Bye-bye.